Hey folks, how you doing? Joe here. We're out at the fort. It's a little bit of a rainy day, but that's all right. We got a project today. The main project we want to do today is to build a proper fire pit. Now you've already saw me importing the rocks from the lake. There's no rocks around here, which means I'm going to have to cut a trail from the put-in to my fort so that I can push a wheelbarrow through. Now I'm probably going to have to make two trips because even getting the rocks from the lake up the hill was a huge uh, chore and I have to walk much farther now in the woods over top of downed logs and things like that. So we'll take two trips in because it's going to be too heavy. I'm going to need my saw, my axe, my gloves and we'll go out and we'll clear some trail. Just stuff like this. Again, this is one of those break-offs from the ice storm. This is the top of one of them. But this is all got to get out of my way. Oh my goodness, it's been there for some time. Look at the decay. Look at the dirt. Wow. Yeah, it's got to be a little mouse home or something too. Look at all that. So this is actually a pretty decent sized log uh, down there. It's pretty thick. I think I'll cut it. So anyone who's followed the channel for years will know this. This is my grandma's axe. I have a uh, one of my most popular videos from back before I got popular it was called my bushcraft axe. And this was that. This is probably like 10 years ago or something. This is my nan's axe. Found the head in her basement when I moved in. Had a buddy rehandle it. Great axe. It's got a crack. I messed up when we moved to the new house. Tried to split wood with it. Got a crack in the handle. Got to replace it, but I think it's okay for now. So, I'm going to make a big V here. And hopefully, just be able to move the, the log over after I chop it. Make it a little bit easier to flip over. Wow. It's in there still. It's like puzzle pieced in with all these other deadfalls. Jenga in. Jenga it in, if you will. Will you? Will you? Not cold, not cold anymore. Oh, it stinks. Ugh, like rotten dank. Ugh. So all those other trees that I just did were really not that bad. We could go around them or over top of them, but this is the spot where I know it's going to be difficult. Okay, well that's not bad. We can mush that one down. Uh, cut this. And not even difficult, just more work. 
cut that, cut that, cut that. Now we're pretty smooth sailing. Just gotta go through these trees, maybe around that, and then we're laughing. So the other things on the agenda for today, after I move all the rocks and create this nice fire pit, is to cook up some bacon and eggs and a bagel, make a nice breakfast sandwich. And I also bought a big tarp, a big brown tarp that I can potentially put out here. I might have to measure it up and put it up next time because I don't know the specific method that I'm going to be using to attach the tarp to the top of the shelter. Oh, up the hill we go. Okay. Well, that worked out pretty good. I'm soaked with sweat, my heart's pounding on my chest, but we did it. We got one more load to do. Woo! Invigorated. As much as, as, much as I'd love to just dump this wheelbarrow out, wheelbarrow style, uh, I'm afraid that some of these limestone uh, stones will break. So. Toss them out. All gentle like. Uh oh. All gentle like. Oh, forgot about probably double this total. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ah, settle down. Settle down now. Oh man. That was some work. I'm sweating my butt off. I really need some food. I came out here first thing in the morning. I just ate a banana and a granola bar before I left. I burned all that off for sure. I need some food real quick. I'm gonna make up this fire pit, look for some suitable wood, cook up a great brunch. Mm. Wow. Okay. This tarp that I bought is 16 by 20. There's no way that this is 16 feet long or wide. Hmm. Maybe we'll have some overhang on the sides. And then 20, there's no way that this is 20 feet going up here, so this will extend onto the roof. So what, it, what I can do actually 
is replace this tarp with this one, same spot it is, and then go up and it'll go farther than that tarp does up there, and it'll cover maybe half of that roof. That might do all everything I need. That might be it. But anyway, that's for after or next time. I'm really not certain. But uh, let's get to this fire pit. Some suitable rocks, definitely. I have to decide where I want my fire pit because it'll be permanent after this. Oh, a little piece of rock broke off from the fire. Crazy. Um, it'll be permanent after this. So I want to make sure I have it in the right spot where it's going to be out of the way of everyone. It's still going to give me room enough to walk around. So if I'm sitting in that chair, that fire is way too far away from me. Now I certainly can move that chair. That's not an issue. I can move it anywhere I want in here and I can put other chairs in here to sit too. But do I want my fire pit there in the middle of the shelter? Fort. 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 It's a fort. Where do I want it? Well, if I... put it here there's like a little hill going up right here okay if I put it just here I'll be closer if my chair is here I'll be closer to the fire it's less out of the middle of the whole place it is in the walkway though yeah because I'm gonna build a substantial size pit too Maybe I'll just bring it a touch, like maybe a foot closer, not as close as, as that. Right, let's start making it and see. That's the thing, eh? I don't ever really have too much plans when I come out here. It always just like works out. It always just goes by what's happening at the time. And I, I really like that and I'm fine with that. And if you want to change things after and move them around, that's still totally uh, cool. There's no problem with that. I guess I'll get all my rocks over here. See what I'm working with. Show me what you're working with. Move those rocks. Build a pit. I did this before. It's an old bit. I'll stop now. This one I think is the biggest. It's thick and pretty substantially big. Look at all the pockets in it. All the pores from the uh, night pores but this is from water swirling around in there over however long in Lake Huron I wonder I don't know if I want to line it with rocks too or not I might want to build like it up off the ground I think I might have enough rocks for that actually because in all honesty I don't want my fire pit too much longer than this really I could probably use this big fat one let's see it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than this. Relatively flat. We can do this. lining up that's as big as I want to go for the pit maybe I'll put a couple in front to like level it off um, rectangle it off as it were like that definitely like that bam look at that this is meant to be it's meant to be pretty sturdy. Put this fish looking on here. <laughs> Doesn't it look like the outline of a fish? Kind of. I don't have many rocks left. Three big ones, three big flat ones at least. This is kind of leaning in. So I figure if I 
prop, this big round one behind. That's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna give it a lot of support. And I might be able to le have it not lean in so much. It's kind of a bit better there, I think. Okay, then, like I said, I do want to showcase this one with the, the holes in it, wherever it went. Wherever you go, where you go. There it is. Okay, okay. I don't hate that. Just got to get that in there properly. Two more. Snap. There, look at that. Not too shabby. Could use a little bit more rocks just to like level it out from like boom, boom, like make a rectangle there, like I was talking about. But for the most part, that's up off the ground. It's a huge, huge platform. It can make have a really decent fire there. And with these all backing, it's gonna kick the heat back onto me. I will go around and collect some clay and sand and dirt, soil, throw it all in there, pack it in better, get a couple more rocks from home. But I am pretty happy with this. All right, well, before anything else happens, I need to eat because my stomach is very angry at me. Some maple. Dry it inside. Yeah, bone dry, perfect. You know, I built this big old tripod for an overnighter last year with Tripper, so he didn't knock it over. I needed it to be stable. But I think I might be able to turn this, I've been using it as a ladder. You've seen me get up and down there, on there a hundred times. But I think I might be able to turn this into some kind of a saw horse or a saw aid at least. So let's see. I can move it back when I need it for a, a ladder. It's not a problem. I can even make a proper ladder for it. For the fort. Ladder fort. Not now, we can lower this and make another one of these and then put it across and that'll be a sawhorse. But it's not time for that right now. It's time to eat food. Well, this might work actually. Well, that works. I don't even know if this is dry now. There's a crack here. I might have, water might have got into this. Yeah, it feels rotten. That was soggy and rotten. Okay, we got one good piece from it. It's not bone dry. Not at all. Bunk. All right, well, we got a sawhorse. And we got one piece of wood. Half a piece of wood. We'll be back. This there's a good dead one here, but I got to get up high in a crook in order for it to catch, or else it's going to come right down, and I won't be able to get the rope back out. Yeah. That's 
not the one I wanted. Remember when I was like, I need to eat food, not mess around, and then I started messing around like crazy? Yes! Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, I got it around the one I wanted, but it went around another one as well. There it is. Come on. Well, that worked. I don't know how dry that piece is, and my thing is stuck. Let's see if we can get it. stuck. Nice. Boop. I wonder if this is even dry at all. Everything's pretty wet. Well, we'll get the saw over here and find out. She's dry. At least on one side of it. I say that and then it starts to get easy. Oh, the core is no good. Ha, ah, look at that, huh? The outside is great, the core is no good. Just like me. Watch this. Like, that's dense. Hard, right? Hard stuff. Then, sponge. Like very soft. I just want hardwood. I just want some dry hardwood. All right, I went to a different part of the woods I normally don't go to. I found this. This is one tree, this, and, yep, that one next to it. So I got two really really dry solid pieces of maple i'm going to spend some time cutting these up well i'm going to cut one piece and get a fire going and as that fire is starting i'm going to cut the rest up i have, have my brunch before too long collected a bunch of birch bark it's wet it doesn't matter i'll keep it in my pocket anyway just to keep it somewhat dry it off somewhat but it doesn't matter all right let's see how good this saw horse is going to work this way I'm not hunched right over the ground cutting all day. You can see when I use the saw, I use the full length of the blade. Sometimes it busts up on my finger, but not too bad. You gotta learn how, when to stop without stopping too short. Gloves help buffer it, for sure. Okay. Super dry. Let's uh, let's split this. Oh, you can hear how dry it is. Perfect. That is slick. I'm gonna keep all of this wood good. I'm gonna cut it up into decent sized pieces and keep it underneath the fort. Because this is quality, quality stuff. I have to come out and do an overnight again soon. And uh, once it gets like pretty snowy, and this will be good firewood for cooking and keeping keeping warm. Uh-oh. Got my MP knife with me from Matt Paul. Check him out, MP Knives on Instagram. Very solid work. This is a convex. I'm just gonna bust some of this wood down a little bit. 
Puss it down. Puss it down. Matt sent me this knife to mess around with. I've played around with it a little bit, but uh, I have a lot of rotation of them. So, anyways, getting this one out today. It's a pleasure to use. Matt's a good guy. I met him through Bushcraft USA. We were on there for a long time together. We camped a couple times together. I believe he's in. Uh, I'm not going to say where he is in case he doesn't want people to know. But he's in the States, for sure. But MP Nyes on Instagram. He's a blacksmith, actually. Forges and all, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. This is a full height convex. It's pretty thick. Maybe 5.16 or 5.30 seconds. Maybe even three sixteenths. Beefy, beefy stuff. Let's see if we can make some nice curls. Yeah. I'm not even trying. I think singing through it. This is hard wood too. I've got my prep all laid out here. So I've got, this is really my second stage here, but the, the shavings are not enough by themselves, not the, enough amount of them. They would be enough if I got enough of them, it would be sufficient. But I've got birch bark and somewhat on the inside, some of it's dry. But we'll just bust it up. It's at the, other, the other stuff, like the, uh, the, mo the majority of it is quite wet. We'll get this going, even if it takes a couple sparks of the old fire steel. So we got that, we got that together. Actually, the shavings might even connect. I'm having a hard time speaking, I'm so hungry. The shavings might grab the, the spark from work. So first, second, third, fourth stages. I have my old buddy Nick from HF Survival School, the super duper fire steel he made me. So you can see this knife throws pretty decent sparks. Bam son. So the birch bark ended up catching. I'll put the shavings on top. And then turn it all upside down. Turn my world upside down! She'll go. She'll go. I'm trying to just build up a little bit of a brace here. Sticking it, old school, Terry Barney style. As always, it takes me a hot minute to get my fire prep ready, but then once it's ready and going, sorry, once it's ready, the fire gets going, no problem. I collected all for hardwood for this because it's been raining and snow melting off everything, and everything is just saturated with water. Let me show you an example. Normally, I could just grab like some of these pine twigs or spruce twigs or whatever, and you could still do it. I just felt like getting some dry wood. You can see they're, you can see they're slick. Anyway, my fort looks so cool. Let's wait till that wall is done and that wheelbarrow's out of there. Oh, fire. We have made fire. I gotta get some more pieces on there now. Another good reason to use all hardwood. This is a smokeless fire now for the most part. All dry, dry wood. But it's not really that big a deal. I brought some nails in here. This is just like cotton wrapped up uh, around some nails. 
in order to put the tarp on, but we gotta wait and see what the deal is. I don't think I'm gonna be putting it on today. But got some eggs in here. So this is the way I, I this is the way I pack my eggs. <laughs> I've got this is a 12 centimeter zebra billy can. This is one of my oldest pieces of kit ever. If you look at it, it's like an egg shape itself because it's been warped and heated so many times. I've used this on like five day extended winter camps, cold camps. Um, anyways, insert goes in there, nice and tight because of because of the oval shape of the pan uh, pot. I'll put my bagel in, the, my lovely everything bagel. The woodsman's breakfast, right? Bagel goes in there. Then I got two eggs, farm fresh eggs, wrapped in some uh, paper towel. And they just go in gingerly inside there. Got the insert goes in there. You can put the bacon in top. There's four pieces there. And right, nice little package. A neat little package. This is my Snow Peak titanium spork that I've had for a long time. And this is a GSI flipper. Spat spatula. It's foldable as well. This is my olive oil filled with debris. And this is my field skillet. My cast iron that has taken shape and getting oiled up like crazy and becoming my own. Super happy with that. Field company. This is a size 8 made in the States. Wow, that's a gnarly piece, man. That's gonna be some good firewood one night. All right, I've let the hardwood fire die down. I never even really tested to see if this would still stand up here, but it seems like it will. It's a little bit lopsided, but that's okay. So I think I wanna cook my bacon right on the coals, uh, just to make more use of this hardwood. That way I'm not gonna eat all the grease either. It's gonna drip through and then I can cook my eggs in the pan. Make my little sandwich up, so that'd be pretty good. Um, I want to get that bacon on real soon. Just let the the heat and a little bit of flame there try and clean it off a bit, and then I'll maybe scrape it with some wood. No mouse dank on there, you know. No Rocky Mountain fever. No Fort fever. <laughs> oh, my tummy's growling. Oh yeah. Good amount of dank coming off. How many times have I said dank in this video? I think it's like three count, da three count dank, three dank count in the video. Too bad Doug wasn't here. He'd be confused. <laughs> Is it a good thing? Sometimes it can be. I want everybody to go over to Doug's page. Actually, go to his Instagram. Go to Doug Linker, his Instagram, and on his latest post, just blow it up. Be like, go camping with Joe. Blow it up for me, if you want to see that. I want to do it. He doesn't listen to me. Maybe he'll listen to you. <laughs> I'm just joking. Doug's a busy guy. I'm not joking about going to blow him up, though, about camping with me. I'm dead serious about that. All right, let's get this bacon on here. I didn't even intend to cook it on the coals. I had every intention of cooking it on my cast iron just because I really enjoy using it. But you know what really the truth is when you use, when personally for me, when I cook bacon and then I try to cook the bacon, or sorry, the eggs in the, ba in the bacon grease, it always just like um, sticks. Or, or maybe I'm cooking it too hot. Or maybe I'm just, I don't know but it always seems to stick because of the chunks in the bacon grease and then the yolk breaks and I don't want to break a yolk on YouTube because last time I did that people were screaming at me sacrilege sacrilege you don't do that <laughs> and I don't normally I don't even know why I did it so that's gonna be all hardwood maple smoked You know why I like camping? Because it's intense! Oh, my tummy. 
What a nice day. So a couple more projects I want to do over here. I want to get this log put in place. I want to make that into an axe chopping state. Excuse me. I want to make that into an axe chopping station. So that'll take some time. Not not big projects at all. And maybe I'll get another log for the wall or something. I think I will leave the tarp because I got to figure things out. I gotta I gotta try and think about how it's gonna work. So we'll leave the tarp till next time. Oh, my bacon's flaming. Flaming bacon. No. Dripping all the juices off right now. On account of that's what makes it flame up. Oh, she's slippery, slippery bacon still. left in me. I'm working. Working with no fuel. So that bacon's almost done. I should have had this bagel on a little bit before, but we'll get it on now. Crisp it up. And you know what? Also, the, the eggs that come in the, that I wrap in the paper towel, paper towels are never a bad thing to have a couple of them in the bush with you. Blow your nose, whatever you need to do, emergency type stuff. Anyway, here we go. Great knife for cutting bagels. <laughs> oh man, it's enamel. Super happy about this bacon now. Okay, they're all pretty good. There's some ends here that need a little bit more, but that can sit back there while I cook everything else. And I'll eat it like this, no problem too. It was smoked, that's super smoked. It's even changed like that smoked color. Not that it wasn't before, it's bacon, but... So for example, I've already wiped the fire steel stuff off my knife with the paper towel. Not like I don't always use my, my pants, but whatever. And from the way of my backpack, it's got some backpack dank and oil in it from oiling it at home. Look at that. And it's not toilet paper. This episode of Building a Fort in the Woods brought to you by generic paper towels. <laughs> Have you heard of these brand new things? They call them paper towels. Bam, no shells. One hand. Oh, I might have messed them up anyway. Uh oh. Uh oh. Might have messed them up anyway. I'm trying to put in some oil there. So I don't want it super dippy because I am putting it on a sandwich. Uh oh, that one's gonna break anyway. I lost half of that one. But anyway, gotta cook it a little bit. Try not to burn it. Which I think I'm doing. I gotta take it off the heat for a minute. Alright, she done. 
this one popped this one's still good but it's a little bit solidified now these are super crispy we got the eggies on oh yeah yeah it's just one of my favorite things to make we'll get the bacon on we'll put the juicy pieces on Save the crispy pieces to eat because that's what I want to do. Oh, put this one there. We go. There we go. Look at that stack, bro. Upside down and everything. Let's get some grill marks on that. Oh, yeah, the yolk is coming through the top. Oh, baby. Grill marks, grill marks. Oh, what do you like? What do you like? I like everything bagels in the woods. Okay, okay, it's hot now. It's hot. Oh my goodness. Take our first bite of our food cooked in this fire pit for the first time. First. Look, the yolk is like soft boiled and it squeezed up through the bagel hole. Bag a hole. So worth it. After a while, I stopped being hungry. Oh, man. Well. I'm going to enjoy this. I'll get back to you. See it? I hope so. I hope it's focusing. Anyway. That big old glob in the middle. Is that yolk on my face? This spot's always really nice and dry. Powdery dirt there. I'm gonna store some wood. Here. So I was able to saw up quite the pile of wood here. Still got one piece left, but I wanted to show you that before I cut it. But they're all decent size. And 90% of it is extremely dry. Too bad. So I've got a sawing method that I've shown you before that usually works better with bigger bow saws, but now I've got this 24, it might work better and I've not tried it, so I figured let's try it. So when you have a piece of wood that's an awkward size, it's almost, it, it's, it's two pieces left, it's too long to leave in one piece and it's awkward to hold it and, and cut it and i could definitely use the saw horse and do this but this is a, a good technique and it looks a little silly but it works really well and it saves your one arm because you're using both your arms and it, 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 and it goes pretty easily actually it's a good technique kyle likes to use it quite a bit so you hold 
you throw the saw, you hold the saw with your feet. Hold it in place with your legs and your feet and you grab the wood and you just kind of move the wood up and down. This blade does need to be tightened, like I was saying last time. It's cutting fine, but I can tell that it needs to be tightened because all of my cuts are on a crazy angle. And that means the blade is moving. So it's not as efficient as it could be. Anyways, this is 90% of the way through and we don't need to continue to cut it. But look, you can see, look, you can see just how wampus my cut line is, it's all over the place. And that's not stereotypical of me. That is more of a novice type cutter. That used to be what I used to look like when I cut back in the day. Anyways. And I certainly don't say novice to try to be degrading by any means. Like I said, uh, that was me back in the day. And a lot of times you'll see people holding, cutting a piece of wood and it'll be like, you want to do one of these for some reason, cut on an angle like you would with an axe. And it, I don't know why, but a lot of people like to do that, and I, I was like that too. Anyways, the blade does need to be tightened, and that will fix the uh, the bending issue, but I don't have my multi-tool on me, so we'll do it at home. Or bring it out next time and do it here to show you what I mean. That's what we'll do. All right, check it out. I got another log on there. So two more logs put on today. For a total of two, four, six, seven logs on there. All pretty sturdy. This last one, ooh, gummy, gummy. This last one, I used a shim. I, um, I didn't cut any off the bottom. I just kept digging super deep and pulling the rocks out. And then it was, I got it to a little bit too short. So I just used a little wedge in there. She's on. So I'm pretty happy with that. I want to secure this into the ground and make um, an actual X station, an X working station, splitting station. So I got some poles. I'm gonna point the edges and hammer them into the ground over top of the log that we're working on right now. That way, see how it's rolling a little bit when I'm doing this? That way it won't roll at all. It's pretty good. Chamfer the edges at the top just a little bit so it doesn't mushroom out on me too bad. Not that it really matters. All right, I'm gonna make four of these. I might split this one down because it's super long and try to get two out of it. the bigger ones on that side. One's gonna be way too long, but maybe I have a use for it being too long. Who knows? We'll leave it and see. It's starting to split out pretty good, but the logs in there could be a bit tighter. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. It's not moving at all. Nice. Okay. I'm going to love tap here. I'm going to love tap there. 
Here a tap, there a tap. Everywhere a tap, tap. I'm happy with that. Cool. All right, well, we gotta test it now, right? We'll test it once. And we gotta get going. I'm gonna use the biggest, gnarliest piece I found, or that I have, cut off that maple. Hmm, I might have to go from the other side. We'll do it here just for the sake of doing it, but normally I'd probably stand on that side because this tree is kind of close. You know what? I'll move the camera. I'll move the camera and do it properly. No lazy Joe today. Look at that. Gotta love the grandma's axe. All right, well, I'd say that works. All right, in true Joe fashion, I said I was gonna leave it long. I'm gonna cut it, I just don't like the way it is. But uh, this is it, I'm wrapping this video up. Got a lot accomplished today, I feel real good about what happened today. Hauled all those rocks here, built that awesome fire pit, cooked up an amazing brunch, put more wood on the wall, figured out my sawhorse deal, made up an axe station, found amazing wood, stacked tons of wood. Yeah, good day. Anyways, you guys have a good one. I'm gonna come back to the fort real soon. And I'll tell you, right now, in the forecast, there is snow. So we shall see what happens with that. But as of now, that's what we're planning on. All right, guys. You guys have a good day. And girls. You all have a good day.